before you know whether or not that it's a viable opportunity, you got to first determine the value. Because once you determine, you got to you got to know where you're trying to end before you start. How do you get a seller's and buyer's agreement, uh, the contract? How do you obtain one? So myriad of ways to do that. Uh, so you, are you speaking exclusively with going off market? Uh, yes. Okay. So we, I mean, we don't have necessarily a, a free one, right? We have one inside of our mentorship program uh, for our students to use. But my guess would be, Ardell, honestly, today, you could probably Google like off market contract and somebody in their funnel, either as a start of their funnel, would give you a free one or charge you probably 10, 20, 30 dollars for one uh, at the at the start of their funnel. OK, OK, if you if you, if you connect with uh, real estate, well, investor friendly realtors, it's a good chance that many of them could also have an off market contract that they use when they're not doing MLS deals. Right. Because a lot of agents are now starting to become at least the investor friendly ones are starting to have a wherewithal of how to maneuver deals off market. And in those cases, they shouldn't use like whatever the MLS contract is because they're not trying to include their broker in that transaction. So even an agent who's investor friendly should should have some inroads to a to a to a contract. OK, OK. Yeah. And maybe, and then, uh, you know, maybe 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 we'll do a. A gift or a giveaway or something, you know what I mean? Maybe it'd be a bonus by the end of this come Friday. Maybe, maybe since it's a challenge, we'll challenge some people to do something and possibly give away our proprietary um, uh, contract. So you never know. It's early. That'll that'll work. <laughs> okay, I got another question. Yes, sir. Okay, how, do, how, how do you calculate the R, uh, ROI? That's a great question, man. Y'all still in all my thunder. That's part of today's message. But but essentially, the, the, the return on investment is the measurement of however much money you have in the deal versus what your return is, right? So if I make $10,000 annually cash flow and I spend $100,000 on the house, I get a 10% return on investment. That's how that's calculated. Okay. and it's, I, the I'm a you have, it's the money you have committed versus the return that you get out of it. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to ask one more, and then I'm going to let somebody else ask a question. Okay. Don't get okay. me in trouble up here, RD. I don't want no problems on day one with nobody, man. All right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it short. Okay. What's, what's, uh, what's the rule 72? What's the rule 72? I couldn't tell. I don't use no rules. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. just a saying, like, you yeah, know. It's, it's cute. You know what I'm saying? Just like the 65%, the 75%, the I, we we do good deals, you know what I'm saying? And it's a way you do that without having no kind of jargon attached to it. Yes, I got a question. I think um, I, uh, I I got with you guys last week and I wanted to scale. So I have a rental property here in Florida. Can you guys hear me pretty good? I'm driving. Yes, sir. I, I got you, Willie. Over at o uh, Umatilla, Umatilla, right? You, you, Umatilla, not Umatilla. <laughs> Hey man, some say Uma, some say Yuma. You know what I'm saying? I'm from up north. I, I came from down here. Yeah, I'm from yeah. around here. You know what I mean? Ah, I love it, bro. But look what I'm looking at. I'm, I want to scale. I want to get me another property. And the property that I have in Umatilla has been paid off for the last ten years. Okay. You know, and I want to either, you know, get money out of that, or should I get money out of my house that I live in as a HELOC? OK, so let me first ask you this. Um, how, what's what's the current cash flow on the property that that you got that's been paid off for 10 years? So, uh, been there. She's been in there about six years and we bought the rent up. She only pay, it's a two one. Nice, you know, nice two one. Okay. And she only pays like eight fifty, something like that. Right. Okay. Well, market saying that she should be paying a little bit more. Um, but she done been there six years, man. We, <laughs> you know, she's, she, she pays on time and we have right. no problems with her. So it's, right. Um, so your, so your net cash flow on that deal is like what? 350, something like that after taxes and everything. Um, the taxes on the property is not that bad. You talking about like the, uh, 
I'm sorry, Willie, you broke up. You talking about the property taxes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like after all your expenses, property taxes, insurance, like all that. What's your net cash flow on that? What, what you what you think the property worth? If you tell me that, I can tell you the rest. Oh man, the property. I've had people offer me like one fifteen, you know, one uh, one fifty. People offer me to, to purchase it, but I don't. I don't want to sell it because I'm. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay yeah home. That, yeah, I'm not asking what they offered you, though. I'm asking what it's worth. Have you had comps pulled on the property to determine the value? No, sir. I have okay. not had comps pulled on that, though. Okay. So this week, right, I want you to connect with, a, with an agent and get comps pulled. But I'm going to give you this answer until you get that information for the, for the rest of it, okay? Fair. So, so if me not knowing right now what it's worth, this is what I would tell you. If, you could, if you're getting 850 cash flow, if, you know, <clears throat> I don't know how much capital you want to have on hand to deploy, but let's just say it is hypothetically worth 100000 You go do a, you do a cash out refinance for 80 depending on what type of rate you can get 30 year fixed. Um, <clears throat> you probably your debt service all in is going to be, you know, principal interest tax and insurance is probably going to be you know, 550, 600. Right. So what happened is you can pull that capital out. And your your cash flow is going to basically invert itself. Right now you're getting like five five fifty. You're going to end up on the other side getting probably like three three fifty. In my humble opinion, I would I would much rather use the investment for the investment. Do a cash out refinance on it because it's an investment property. If my debt service keeps it to where I get a decent cash flow, and then deploy deploy that liquid capital into something else rather than leverage my primary residence. Perfect. I appreciate that. Okay. But but again, I want you to check the comps and determine what the real value is. And then let's have a follow-up conversation to this after you get that. All right. My question is, because I see a lot of a ton of distressed properties that I that could potentially be used for an investment. How do I know which one would be a good investment? So kind of the conversation I was just having with Willie, right? You so so we got this process that we teach called reverse engineering. OK, that's how we determine our ARV. So what happens is and just for everybody that don't know, including you, Malik, ARV is the after repair value. OK, this is synonymous with the projected sales price of what we think the property will be worth after we go in and do whatever renovation to it, et cetera. OK, we, we determine that value by the comps. Comps are comparable sold properties that are similar to the property of which you're pursuing, okay? And it's a myriad of different factors that go into comps. I can't teach all that right now. It's over an hour long course inside our program. But, but it's a lot of key components that you need to look at. And we, we run our comps as if we are an appraiser because the appraiser is the person that has the final say in what your value is. So what happens is you go out here and it's a lot of agents that don't know how to properly run comps. And and no dig to you, Monique, and whatever other agent that may be on here. But it's just a lot of them that don't, right? I'm just telling you. So that's why it's up to us to become proficient at running our own comp so that we can hold everybody else accountable to give us the right information. And I'll say all that to say this. You, before you know whether or not that it's a viable opportunity, you got to first determine the value. Because once you determine, you got you to know where you're trying to end before you start. So you think with the end in mind, when you determine your ARV, then that would tell you based off of what the ARV is and the rehab is what your offer price should be. Right. Just because it just distressed don't mean it's good. I heard um, uh, somebody and I, forgive me, somebody put in their homework. I think it was Johnny uh, that he did a flip and lost almost 20 grand. Right. Just because it's distressed don't mean if the upside ain't there, it ain't no money to be made. So we got this saying in real estate that we make our money when we buy, which is just indicative of the fact that if we don't evaluate and underwrite the deal up front and make sure that there's enough spread, we go through the whole renovation, have a beautiful flip and still it lose money. OK, so so that's why I told you guys before cheap houses are expensive. We got to be careful just because something cheap don't mean it's a value. Mm -hmm. So the first thing will be figuring out what the comps are. Secondly, once you determine the ARB, 
and you can figure out what the value is, then after whatever rehab they need to go into it, you could determine what your offer price needs to be for the deal to be profitable. But it all starts with determining the value, though, and working working your way backwards. I'm never intrigued by the front end cost of something. 